Hi, I'm Joel Lycatcher, and today we're talking Tannis Airless Tires. And now it's time to take this tire off and work on getting this on. So let's get to that next. Well, I'm outside here in front of my garage and I'm here because it's finally a bright sunny day. It's been three days of solid rain here in South Florida and I need this hot full sun to warm up this tire so I can stretch it and get it fitted on my rim. I'm using my Weber barbecue grill thermometer to see how hot the driveway is with this probe. Well, the temperature right now on the pavement is 118 degrees. The target is 120, but I'll take it. So we're gonna take my wheel and just put it on the pavement, simple as that. Let it sit for about 40 minutes to an hour and it should soften up. Might come back at some point and just give it a little flip like a pancake. While I've been waiting for the tire to warm up, I set up my tools. I've got my pins, of course, and I've already tested these to be the correct size. The S-tool, which comes from Tannis with your tires. This is the P-tool that I'm going to be using for the first time. This is a dealer tool. Uh, you can buy this. It's optional. So last time, I had to use some zip ties to get them installed, but I may not this time, but I'm going to have them handy and some side cutters to remove the zip ties. I made a little work area here out of these foam pads. These foam pads have a hole in it. Where did I get them from? They came with my Falco wheel that was built by Velocity and shipped to me. Now, you can make your own out of any dense foam and cut holes in it, or just simply ask the bike shop that uh, is installing your wheel for you and received your wheel to save the packing material for you to take home because that can be useful. Well, it's been about an hour, and according to my thermometer, it's about 124 degrees on the pavement. So let's go pick up this wheel. And it's hot. The wheel is very warm. Almost too hot. Well, I'd say it feels like about 120 degrees. So at this point, I'm going to try stretching it. And I'm going to just take my foot and give it some tugs. It's... This is hopefully more pliable now than it was before. But it definitely should be easier. I'm gonna work fast when I get inside to put the pins in and seat this. It's about 88 degrees out here now. I'm just working it around, trying to get it softened up. <coughs> there we go. Well, now that we got this all stretched out, we're going to go take this to the workbench, put the pins in, and mount this on our rim. Let's get to it. Here's our wheel. It's already starting to cool a bit, so let's get working on it. Now there's two sides of these pins. You want the flat side up, which would be this side. And we're just going to start putting all these pins in. I'm putting the rib side down. It's another way of looking at it. I might have to put this back outside again to warm up some more because it's feeling like it's chilling down rather faster than I'd like. It's 88 degrees outside and a nice 74 inside. I mean, this is kind of a bore, the boring part of it, sticking the pins in. But that's what we do. It is a lot of pins. The bags come with, I think, 42 pins. 
and generally speaking so we have more than enough and a few spares for one tire and I think that's all the pins come 42 in the bag and after we get these in we have to push them down And that's where this comes in. So we just push them down. This is the easy part. The hard part's coming next. I'm a righty, but I'm doing this with my left hand so you can get a nice view of this on the uh, camera. Pardon my awkwardness of using my left hand. Even this tool has a nice flat area that you can use for pushing pins in. Pretty much anything you could use to push the pins in, as long as it's flat. Okay, let's make sure they're all the way down. Let's give this a little second look. And the reason is because we're going to engage one side and then the other. All right, there we go. Look at this side, it's kind of like sticking out a little bit. You know what, I am gonna push them in. I can use my finger at this point. I just wanna center them in there a little better. You wanna center them. You see, it's not hard. They move pretty freely in here. And now they're pretty much even. Now this tire is cooling down. I think I may put it back outside just for a little bit longer, just to warm it up. And then I will put it on here, which will be the difficult part. Well, here's the tire. I uh, just had lunch. I left it in the sun to keep warm while I uh, had my lunch. And uh, it's it got partly cloudy. So this feels like it's maybe 90, de 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's see what we can do about this. I'm going to take it, pull it towards me. See how far I can get this. Okay, that's pretty much it. I think at this point, I thought I could do better with the stretching. But I think that's about it. So, you know what? The foam blocks, I'm going to save, save for later at this point. Let's see what I can do to get this on. Because one of the tricks that I've learned is I don't want to um, see, you know, excuse me. It's already doing that same thing it did before. Whereas I had it set, but it starts moving. And I find the smaller the tire, the more prevalent this is. So I'm going to start using these zip ties to keep it in place as I get it around. This is my old method, which I thought maybe I can get by without, but afraid not. I still need to use zip ties here. So I, as I progress, progressively get it further onto the wheel. I mean, right now I'm not really trying that hard. It's not that difficult yet. Let's more pulling. I get it as far as I can, and then I'm going to use the uh, S tool. <coughs> okay, that's about it. That's about as far as I can get it on right now, and the tire is still warm. So now I'm going to use this tool, and I'm going to get over here. I'm going to try to bring it up. And as I do, I'm going to use a few more zip ties. So I should have had this ready before I started <laughs> because I can't really, I need a third set of hands. So let's get this started, then I'll 
tighten it down in a few moments. Okay, so get this up and bring that down. And now we're gonna pull it up some more. Bring it down and more. And yeah, this can be a slow process. Ouch. This is the part that people hate about the tennis tires because it is hard to get this on. This is my method. Someone said once, so we can get this up higher. Someone said take this and roll it. Let's see if that works. Uh, no, I can't get enough traction to roll it. But I am going to get another zip tie ready. As I get this on, I tighten these so it cannot undo. Let's move this down a bit. And you see how that's working? Just bringing it up as I move it along. Making progress. Another zip tie ready. Eventually it'll pop on. But yeah, this is a difficult process. And again, this is why I wanted to warm it. smaller the tire, the more difficult this process is. <clears throat> well, I've got this, let's get another one. So the zip tie method is still needed and important here. Come on, get in there. By the way, I only buy the finest zip ties from Harbor Freight Tools. Because <laughs> I go through them so frequently. <clears throat> See, as I do this, I'm sliding forward across the tool. <clears throat> there we go. We are actually getting this along quite well. I'm rather pleased with this so far. The first time it took, I did this, it took me like three hours because I didn't do all the things that I now know I can do. Oh, wow, we are almost on this now. Oh my goodness, this is working. I'm gonna take this out. <clears throat> and look at that, nearly all done. I mean, we're still working on the other side, but I am so pleased with how well this is going along. Okay, so we gotta get these over now. So let's try a little old-fashioned rotating. You know what, I think I'm gonna need this tool again. Let's see if I can... <clears throat> you know what, I'm gonna try to snip these off. 
Let's see if I can get this tool in here for that last bit. <clears throat> yeah, there it is. There it is. And now just kind of rotate it in a bit. Well, you can see how long that took me using these techniques. Warming is very, very important. You know, <laughs> I didn't check my rotation. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Let's go do that now. Obviously, it goes this way. If this is the wrong rotation, I'll be very unhappy. Let's see. Oh, look. I put it on backwards. It is rotating in the wrong direction. Well, let's go take this off and do it again. So I am actually using this tool now to take the tire off because I did the stupid newbie mistake of uh, not checking the tire rotation. So let's just break this off and take the tire off and do it again. <sighs> Always check your rotation. You see, here it is. Rotation. This is the gear side, and it rotates this way. So let's go do that again, and let's see if it's just still a fast procedure. Okay, so let's start again with the zip tie. Zip tie one. And I need a few more zip ties. Again, we're just going to seat it in there on one side. And using the zip ties that we go along, I guess this is a second test. And again, we want to stretch it so it's uniform. <clears throat> stretch it. Put in some more. Stretch it as we go along. I don't know if you saw that, but it did move as I pulled it. Okay. And I'm going to do this at this point. It gets a little bit more difficult. And I'm just going to put some zip ties in here, but I'm not going to tighten them. I'm just going to get them started. And I'll tighten them in a few moments <clears throat> as we go along. Okay, again, put the wheel down and pull it towards you. And as you pull towards you, move it into the rim. As I pull it towards me, it starts to seep into the room better. <clears throat> now, if I had a 700 wheel or <laughs> almost any wheel longer, larger than this, I would not be having this kind of trouble. This is because it's a small wheel. Okay. Give it another good pull. <clears throat> it's getting really hard now. And we'll take our S tool. Oh, take some zip ties. Take some more zips. Again, I'm going to get these ready. 
because I don't have a third hand to help me. I'm just starting to start them. Take my S tool. And bring it up. <clears throat> As I bring it up, I can pull it and zip it. Move it over. Bring it up. And as I bring it up, slide the tool over, bringing the tire. Here is this this side isn't in the, the well as much as I'd like. There we go. Let's bring it closer. Bring it nice and high. Get that in. Tighten the zip and slide the tool forward. Get another zip ready. Bring the tool close. Bring it up. <clears throat> And tighten this up a bit. I'm gonna move this a little closer here. Try to push it up a little more. We'll bring it up and then pull the tire over the tool. Okay. Get another zip. We have a lot of zips here. That's okay, that's why I use the finest, most economical zips you can buy from Harbor Freight Tools. I think I pay under three dollars a bag for a bag of a hundred. There we go. This is doing well. Let's see if I can rotate this. No, not really. Get another zip. We are making good progress for the second time. We are almost all the way in. Ooh, there we go. There we go. That's a tool out. Look at that, we did it. Twice in what was that? Less than five minutes. So let's go and just seat this by giving it a little turn. There we go. See, you hear that? The pins are kind of like slipping into place. So we can get the pin down. I call this part that we're seeding the tang of the tire. <laughs> I had a discussion with Tannis. What do you call that thing? And they didn't have a word for it. So I call it a tang. Anyway, now that's in. We don't need these anymore. Let's just cut them off. I kind of learned this method doing Schwabby Marathon Plus tires because they are incredibly hard to put on. But using zip ties to push the tire into the well makes things go much more easy. 
easily. Okay, that was one of the hardest parts. And if the tire is warm and you got the zip ties, it's not so bad. Okay, next part we're going to do is these pins. So we're going to get the pins ready. So what we want is all these pins to be seated on one side. I'm going to pick uh, this side for no particular reason. So um, let's just push these pins in a little bit. I'm just using my thumb. I want to get them behind the rim. And if I turn the wheel, I might even be able to get them somewhat seated. Maybe yes, maybe no. Actually, some of them are seated on the other side, which I really didn't want, but whatever. We'll deal with it. Just going to push all these in. And now I'm going to use the P-Tool. You probably saw from my other videos I was using the uh, S-Tool, but I'm going to use the P-Tool this time. And the trick to this, it's supposed to be easier. Just get it in there, put the metal clap on there, and... I need to push that in a little more. I got a little tool I like to use here. A little plastic smudger tool. Just want to push that in. I could use pliers for that as well. So let's try this now. Put that on the pin. I don't think it's in far enough. Let's try this. Because I want it to be in as much as I can. Let's try it again. There we go. Let's try this one now. Oops, try it again. There we go. I like this tool so much better than this tool. It costs about $30 and will save you a lot of aggravation. Oh no, but it did mess up my velocity label. Look at that, messed up my velocity label. I guess I'm going to have to get rid of that now. That sucks. I like my labels. But I like making this easier too. And maybe I could ask Velocity to send me some new labels. So much easier using this tool. Oops. It actually bends the pin, and as you slide it out, it pushes it into the slot. Now that is not going because I believe it's too far out, so let's shove that in a bit. Try again. Yeah. You gotta make sure that these pins are inset there good. And then this tool can do its job. Not it enough. Come on. Yeah, that's in. So we're gonna go all the way around here. All right, I've turned the wheel a little bit. And you'll see that's out a little bit. I'm just going to take my needle needles pliers and just push it in. Take my P-tool, put it on top and rotate slowly. No, not enough. You see how far out that is. Sometimes it gets shoved out a little bit. So let's push that in as far as we can. Okay, 
try that again. That is a tough one. Let's try this. I like this tool because it's plastic and doesn't scratch anything. Let's try again. I don't think it's going to go. It's not going. It's just not deep enough. Come on. Maybe it's not in on this side. But it looks like it is. There it goes. Now it's in. All right. Let's try that again. Maybe this one will be easier. There we go. This one looks like it needs to get shoved in a little bit. I'm just using my thumb now. Let's see if you can get a better view here. I'm gonna bring this over like this. There's the pin. There's the tool. And no, not in enough. In enough. Hmm. Come on. Try this tool. Let's shove it in better. Not always easy, but it's easier to do this than that than the other tool. Let's see if I can do this one and come back to it. Maybe that'll be easier. Do a little pressure on the other side. Hmm. Oh, that didn't work either. Come on. Come on. There we go. There we go. So you really got to make sure those pins are in as far as they can go. Um, come on. Snap. Snap. Come on. Ah. I'm not going to use the other method because that PS tool really is painful to use. Come on. This is a bad one. I mean, bad in that it's difficult. Come on. Get in there. It does not want to set. Let's see if I try rotating these a little bit. Get a little pull on this side. So it should be stuck on the other side. Try it again. This is getting personal. I'm 
bring up the pin and see what in on the other side. There, that's shoving. There we go. Sometimes it can be a little bit more work on some of these pins. This one should be easy. It looks like it's behind. Yeah, that was a good one. Just make sure they're set in as far as they can. I know I've got some on the other side that um, I also have to set because that's just how it went in. But you can see here we got almost all the pins set already on this side of the wheel anyway. No. Try it again. These pins are just plastic and sometimes they need a little molding, a little extra help. I'm pushing the wheel up a little bit just so I can get good access to that pin. There we go. See, they will go in. Sometimes they just need a little bit more TLC. Wait, what's that with the pin? I wasn't over the pin there. Come on. There we go. Three more on this side. Woohoo! This one needs shoved in some more. Come on. That's not gonna go. Come on. Get in there, you. Okay. And again. Come on. You can do it. Nope. You can't do it. And I'm just grabbing whichever tool I find first to push them in. I'm not picking one over the other for any reason. So I'm going to push and hold for a little bit. And come on. Come on. What happens if I put this in the front? Well, the camera had reset because it got too hot using 4K videoing. Anyway, so I'm flipping. I just finished this side. They're all set. I'm going to flip over and we have a few more on this side. By the way, this P-Tool also has this little foot here, which I knew about but never used. And it's really nice for getting in there and shoving those pins in a little deeper. Let's see, see how that worked. Okay. Got, let's see, we got five pins left. This one is not quite right. Let's try this one and we'll come back to it. No, those are both too far out. Let's try it again. Come on. You can not do it. Nope didn't do it. Boy, sometimes it can be a bit of a challenge. Sometimes you got to just keep working the pins so they soften up enough that they can 
get in there. Come on. No. Turn my friend the screwdriver again. So just give it a little turn that way. Yeah, the Tannis tire is why people pay me to do it for them because it can be difficult. But it is a 5,000 mile tire. That's what it's rated for. Come on. There it goes. Sometimes you just gotta squeeze it and give it a little time while it's being squeezed to flex down. So I'm just gonna set that and hold it for a few moments. Then rotate, hold it. So it's just gonna take a few more efforts to get in. This one is a stubborn, stubborn sucker. Come on. Looks like it's starting to go down. Let's keep working it. Ah, there it goes. See that? It took a bit of an effort. But eventually the pins will soften up and move in. Now you can see these are clearly too far out. Just shove them all in while I got the tool here. This one's going to be. Ah, there we go. I didn't think that one was going to go. I like to do this and move it. I'm learning the technique is just to go slow. Let's come back to this. This one, I think, looks like it shouldn't be a problem. Just jinx. Oh boy, this is tough because that spoke is in the way. Let's see if I can do this with the spoke in the way. Might have to use the other tool for this. The one that I'm not a big fan of. Because it's so much harder to use. Yeah, the worst part about this is if you do have a spoke that's in the way of the pin. Try it a few more times, just soften up that pin. Rotate it into place and just hold it for a little bit. Last two. I wonder if it's seated on the other side. Feels like it's seated on the other side. Last, sorry, last three. I spoke too soon. I don't think it's gonna go too far out. This one should go in easy. This one is, I hate when that happens. Drop my tool. Ugh. This one looks like it's in pretty well. Let's see if it's if I'm able to set it. Why am I having trouble? I think it's the spoke again. There we go. Oh, that one is easy. This one, on the other hand, is not so easy. Last two. This one does not want to see.
This is a not happy pin. Come on. There we go. There we go. And here we got the trouble one with the spoke in the way. That I might have to use the other tool on. Let's see. Nope. We got it in. Yeah. Okay. Just give it a little rock and roll here. Well, we're just going through these pins. And I looked at both sides. And we are good. We have our mounted tennis wheel. Next thing I want to do is just double check it on the truing stand. I might let it heat up again in the sun just so it softens because I see some of these, some of these pins look like they've, you know, pulled away from the tire a little bit. I think a little softening in the sun might solve that problem. Like here, probably when I overstretch it, you can see there's a gap there, but the pins are in there. And that is, um, Good, and again, we double checked. The rotation is this way, same as this. You see we pull this way to go forward, that's going backwards, and there we go. And as you can see here, it is wobbling. Wobbling can also be caused by a pin that is not well seated into the rim. So if you see a wobble, check for pins not all the way clicked in first. But the rim is true. So I, this is where I made my mistake before. I thought it put the wheel out of true, but it's not the wheel that's out of true, it's the tire. From the truing arm, we can see it, it's right where it should be. It's not hitting the rim. They're hovering just right. Bring that one in a little bit. And we can see the rim is true, but the tire, does wobble. Can you see this shiny sheen on this tire? That's the protective coating. And you need to ride this wheel for about 75 miles to wear that off. And then the tire becomes much more pliable. So I am not going to do anything to this tire. I'm not going to true it. I'm not going to do anything for 75 miles. And then I'll consider if I need to true anything up because I've learned from experience that this tire has to settle in to the rim and that is unique about these tires because you know if you put a pneumatic tire on here it's just going to be pretty pretty good from the get-go for a brand new tire but these tires are less um, malleable they need to warm up they need to soften they need to break in and then we'll take a look at the truenest and see if that's gotten better. When I started to true this Tannis airless tire, I took the entire wheel and I put it out in the direct sunlight. And I did this side for 30 minutes, then I flipped it and did this side for 30 minutes. Got it very warm, brought it in, and started pulling it to the right and the left to get it much more true. And it did a really good job, but I still have a few parts that are pulling away a little bit. And I've marked them again here with this tape on both sides. And I, what I need to do is I need to pull this this way. But it won't budge right now because it's cold. So I'm going to use my commercial heat gun to warm it up. It may be hard to talk over this, but we'll see what happens. It does get pretty loud. And I'm just going to be warming the fire. Between these marks. getting warmer. Got to get the heat deep into the rubber. Don't want it so hot that it melts, but hot that it's too hot to touch. And of course, I don't want to heat the rim up, just the, just the tire. It's getting hot. I take about three minutes. Okay, now i got to put the heat gun in cool mode. I'm going to take this and just pull 
hole in the hole. It is hot. Even the rim is hot. Just kind of roll it like a regular tire. And then, I'm going to come back here. And get them rolling it. And it's still warm. Give it a good roll. Working the epicenter. Checking the marks here on the back where I need to pull. Okay, if I rotate it now, let's see. It's still pulling a little bit, so I've got to work it more. Actually, it's much better already. Much better. It's only a little bit of the tire now. It's still a bit warm, but it is cooling down very quickly. And as I pull it, I'm holding it and then rolling it through the truing stand. A bit more. Let's go warm it up some more. Might have to do this a few times. The point of rubbing is over on this side now. And I'm just going to hold it like that for a few minutes and you can feel it cooling in my hands. And I'm just kind of holding there while it cools. And check. Much, much better. Over here it needs a little now. Actually, let's check, let's check this all out right now. So these are the marks. My hand is right on where the marks are on this wheel. And let's see here. See, it's much quieter. The microphone is not picking up as much sound because I was able to shift the wheel a little bit to one side. And if I open this up just a little bit and give it a nice rotation, you can see it's much, much better than it was. Now again, this wheel has not been broken in yet. It still needs to be ridden, and that will help with making it more true. An important question is, how hot can I make my tire? The answer is, if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot because you have to be able to hold it and manipulate it. And quite frankly, I haven't found getting it more hot than you can reasonably and comfortably touch is just not important. You don't need to get it so hot that it's going to melt. And by the way, in my research, I had first tried this technique on this tire that I had cut off, and I found that even when I heated it very, very, very hot, possibly too hot to touch, it did not melt or deform and was still more malleable. But again, if it's too hot to touch, it's too hot and stop at that point. Now I do have a disclaimer. This is my technique. This is the technique that I use myself and is no way uh, endorsed by Tannis or Tannis America. So use at your own risk and discretion and I hope that was helpful for you. So if you like this video, if it did help you in some way fix your problems, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting that notification bell and liking this video because that helps the Google YouTube ag algorithms to show other people who are just like you this video. Well, that's it. This Tannis 20 inch tire is mounted on the Falco hub motor. Um, Again, we need to break it in by riding it for a while. And um, yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks. I hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm going to be having several follow-up videos and some more uh, Tannis tire tips. Uh, again, my name is Joel Lightcatcher. I'm with Get Back Trikes, and I am a specialist in uh, recumbent bikes and Falco motors. 
and Tannis Tires, and I'm an authorized dealer for a great many of those things and others. So if you have any questions, uh, please leave me a comment below. If you're interested in getting some of this equipment for your own trike or bike, you can give me a call. My number is below in the comments. And again, I'm Joel Lightcatcher. Thanks for joining me. This was fun and much easier than the first time I did it. See you next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching part three on how I mounted this Tannis Airless tire. In case you missed it, here's part one where I totally removed the Tannis Airless tire. And here's part two where I totally rebuilt this wheel. It's an extra step that I did. Maybe not a video you should be following, but very cool to watch. Thanks for watching.